can go first. Welcome to the world of age gap guardian angels. Old dogs that learn new tricks. I like to squeeze a bum or something like that, you know, but I, can't, I have to hold myself back. How old heads can save young hearts. I had a really, really tough time. I almost completely lost it. But the only reason I haven't done that is because of John. Helping their partners through the worst of times. When you're going through a tough time in your life and then you meet that person that, that is your string, it changes things. I think we were meant to be together. Two hearts from different generations. Having a second chance to do my life all over again was a godsend because the last few years before I met Shell were, were disastrous. <laughs> How age gap love can turn your life around. I'll say go for it. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Sixty-five-year-old mechanic Peter and his thirty-three-year-old wife Ebony are reliving some old memories on a countryside drive through Norfolk. I remember the Mark III Golf. Yeah. We had jiggy jiggy. Did we? Yeah, my dark blue one I had. Oh yeah. Don't get in there. No. Well, Peter, known as Flit, and Ebony are heading to the lay-by where they first consummated their age gap love. This is where I kept touching you on the leg and that, you know? This is where we finally, I said, right, this is it, Eb, we've got to stop now. Just here. <laughs> Lovely. I parked up and I looked around. I noticed there weren't nothing around, nobody. So you said, well, what are you going to do to me then, big boy? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, I'll show you what I've got. And then you can have a taste. And you just said, well, come on then, what are you waiting for? <laughs> First time was absolutely amazing. Just to say, Flip rocked my world. I've never been loved like that before. Flit and Ebony's age gap love first began in 1997, when Ebony was just 16 and Flit was 48. Flit was working at a local garage and their romance bloomed over the bonnet of a car. I saw Flit. He was bending over a blue motor at the time and he had blue jeans on. Had a lovely bum in them jeans. A oh, bum to die for. Age was never an issue. I just saw a man who I really liked and possibly fancied and that's all I thought about. I did think she was, you know, a bit of all right, but I thought she was too young to... Um, too young to handle, really. I thought, I mustn't do this sort of thing because it was, like, too young. But age wasn't the only barrier. To complicate things further, Ebony was going out with Flit's girlfriend's son. She was my mother-in-law and she is a lovely woman and she does help me out a lot and that's the only part of me that made me feel guilty for what I was doing. Despite the obstacles, Ebony and Flit secretly got together, but darker and more difficult times lay ahead. Ouch! Stockport in the northwest of England. 51-year-old Michelle has been on the lookout for love, but isn't keen on what the domestic scene has to offer. I've gone off Englishmen. I don't know why. I just don't fancy him. Just repulsed me. I didn't realise I'd that many hairs on my leg. Michelle and her British partner of 25 years got divorced seven years ago. Since becoming single, Michelle has become attracted to men from foreign climes. The Tunisian men are uh, dark skinned. I like the dark skinned men. They do treat us better than the English men do. They're very caring. They're very thoughtful, very loving. And they have great bodies. Isn't it strange what we have to do for, for our men? Hmm? She's getting ready to fly to Tunisia to meet her current partner, 26-year-old Mesba, who's half her age. We met on the internet. I was looking for a relationship. 
wasn't targeting for a younger man. Um, just happened that way. Unemployed Michelle flies out to Tunisia as often as she can. But this trip is no ordinary holiday because she's meeting her boyfriend's mum and dad for the first time. Well, this trip is very special because I'm going meeting my spare's parents, which I haven't done before. I think his mum is 59, so not a lot of difference between me and his mum, really, in age. Older women in age gap relationships are often painted as predators, sometimes dubbed cougars. There's a minimum of 2,000. In Georgia, in America, 52-year-old Sylvia runs her own real estate company and works with her young partner, Adam. I probably piss him off more than he pisses me off, but I'm, I'm a pusher. I, I got to get a lot of jobs done, and a lot of them will hit on Adam. You know, and I forget sometimes who I'm talking to. You know, I'm talking to my partner, not, you know, not, not somebody else. Sylvia founded the company herself, and Adam works for her, hands-on in maintenance. Adam's in no doubt who the boss is. Who wears the pants in the business? I, I would my... definitely, I would definitely give the pants to Sylvia gladly. I'll press them if I have to. <laughs> That's fine by me. Sylvia practically started the business out of nothing, and now here we are, you know, living comfortably. But whilst she's the boss at work, tomorrow Sylvia and Adam are going to become equals, man and wife. They've just collected their wedding license from the city hall. Okay. <laughs> Can I call you Earl? When this is complete and we sign and have the pastor sign, we will be one for all eternity. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> the age gap between us is 17 and a half, 18 years. When I graduated from high school in May of 1980, uh, Adam hadn't learned to walk yet. If I don't properly introduce Sylvia as my wife, then people may make that assumption that, you know, she may be my mom or something like that. Their home wedding is taking place tomorrow, so today Sylvia's got lots to organise. First on her pre-wedding list is a visit to a local florist. What are you needing exactly? I was thinking of something like that for the ladies to hold. Everywhere she goes, there's always a question about her age gap. May I ask the age difference? Yeah, I'm 52 and he's 35. So I'm the old. Are you the cougar? No, that's a, <laughs> that's a dirty word at our house. It's kind of like saying, are you the slut? So <laughs> the reason I dislike the word cougar so much is it implies that I'm out there doing something wrong. And that's, you know, that is not who, who we are. I would imagine there's some people that do seek out lovers that are younger for a reason, and that off far out, you know, that's, that's groovy. <laughs> but that ain't me, you know. We really just set out to find that person that we were meant to be with. Coming up, how Flit stood by Ebony through the darkest struggle of her life. Got put into prison. I was looking at a long time. I got two years, four months and saved from the brink by age gap love. I almost completely lost it. But the only reason I haven't done that is because of John. He's been there as a complete rock. Airport, 26 year old football coach Mesba is waiting for his 51 year old lover Michelle. I am here for meet Michelle. Michelle, it is my love, and I have a long time I not see Michelle. I like Michelle because it is just for one word, it is a good woman for me and for my life. Divorcee Michelle is enjoying an emotional reunion with Mesba, as the airport was the place they first set eyes on each other two years ago. 
I walked through the doors at the airport and I thought, oh, he's gorgeous. I miss you so much, baby. Mm. And your mom. We said hello to each other, and he kissed me on both cheeks, and I kissed him back. Mm. I'll just flower for you, baby. But it isn't just kisses on the cheek Michelle remembers. Always oh, very good in bed. He is the best person I've ever slept with. He knows what to do, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> Sometimes I have to say to him, you know, uh, can I have a rest? You know, you're younger than me. Uh, I need a rest. It is hard work, but it's worth it. Oh, baby. Come on. OK. At an in-house studio in the suburbs of Montreal in Canada, a 33-year-old age gap is bridged by the sound of guitars. 57-year-old Jerry and his 24-year-old wife, Shell, are in a rock band together called Arpatches. Theirs is a partnership forged in heavy metal. Without music, they would not be a couple. It's a defining art uh, that makes us what we are together. So it's music that brought us together. Um, definitely our, our love of Deep Purple. Thank you. The pair met on an online forum Jerry had set up to celebrate the work of pioneering 70s rockers Deep Purple. At the time, Shell was living in Edinburgh, in Scotland, but it wasn't long before Jerry crossed the Atlantic to meet her. This is the first day we met right here. I didn't notice really the age difference. I, I had a person that I loved in front of me, and uh, that's all I saw, really. Shell was just 18 at the time, but her parents didn't share her enthusiasm for 51-year-old record presser Jerry. When she booked a return trip to Canada to meet him again, her parents took extreme measures. I couldn't find my passport. It was a little, where did it go, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then I, I found out later that it was kept in the way for me. Their main concern um, was the age difference. But Jerry worked hard to put Shell's parents at ease and heal the rift. I think I might have uh, actually had the same misgivings if it had been my daughter. Um, so I, I let it ride. I didn't get angry or anything. Just had to prove myself to be worthy because uh, she, she's definitely deserving of being worthy for. So I felt I had to do that. <laughs> Jerry and Shell are now happily married with a child of their own, three-year-old Gillen, named after Deep Purple lead singer Ian Gillen. They're now planning to release their first album as a couple, and they will be performing a special gig to mark the launch. As a band, you want it to sound great. You want to make her sound good. So I, I have to tell her if something's wrong or I have to give praise when praise is due. Can be uh, embarrassing if you have to tell her, well, she's a little flat on that note. But at the same time, she's surprised me a lot uh, with the versatility of her voice. You know, there's so many things she can do. I'm very proud of her, very, very proud. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder for our age gap couples, but often the looks they get from others are less than complimentary. 
You can just see people sort of sniggering and looking and pointing, and it just gets to the point I stare them out and I walk past because I'm thinking, I must be happier than you, and you haven't got no one, or you're sitting in a sad relationship. You do get that occasional, um, you know, someone will poke a little bit of fun in public that don't even know you, and you know, your first reaction is, is what? You know, are you nuts? Have you lost your mind? You know, did you really just say that to me and hurt my feelings for no reason at all? I get the odd look from the two Nizian girls, um, but I think that's because they're jealous. <laughs> We walk in this bar and everybody looks at us very funny. I don't know if it was because of the age difference or because she spilled a couple of beers. <laughs> I think it was the age difference. I know, I'm just kidding. Okay. In South London, a couple with a four decade age gap find it hard to go anywhere without attracting curious looks. 70 year old natural health expert John has been married to 30 year old Joe for five years and as well as staring at them, passers-by make comments. People say, yeah, it's nice you know, to go out with your dad. <laughs> it's my husband. And they're like, oh, and, like yeah, a really big shock and everything. They, they get a bit embarrassed, but, you know, I think, I've um, got used to it. So it's yeah, <laughs> I think sometimes when you're out, like if I give him a kiss or something, then you might sort of see somebody does like a double take or something quickly, because they're like, did that really just happen? We've so, done it on purpose a couple of times, because someone's staring or something. Yeah, and give them something to look at. Give them something to talk about, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but being in a relationship with a four-decade age gap can also have its perks. We went to the cinema to watch a film and asked for two tickets to see whatever film it was that we were watching and got served a ticket for an OAP and a child. <laughs> <laughs> the concession tickets were almost half the price. On Joe's early dates with John, she was just as shocked by their age difference. Initial reaction was, oh my God, he really is old. <laughs> but to be honest, when, when we started talking, well, when I started talking, <laughs> it very quickly just became irrelevant because when we were talking, it kind of felt like actually this, this guy seems to be interested in me, seems to be wanting to look after me and give me advice if I ask for it. Yep. Tell me where it hurts. Yeah, there, yeah. there. Right. Take a deep breath. Breathe out slowly. Jo met John during a difficult period of her life. She'd struggled with confidence issues since being bullied as a child, and when she broke up with the father of her two children ten years ago, she was left at rock bottom. That's as far as it goes. Yeah. I had a really, really tough time um, for a good five or six years of my life. Only a couple of years ago, I kind of had a moment where I almost completely lost it. But the only reason I haven't done that is because of John. He's been there as a complete rock, so when I have got really close to not coping, he's just been a rock to be able to talk about it. It's nice just been absolutely amazing. It was John's age and experience that was the key. I think definitely has made a difference with him being older. I think if I'd have met somebody who was my age at the time, I was only 21, and I think a 21-year-old lad, 25-year-old lad, wouldn't have been able to even comprehend what I'd been through and what I was, how it would still affect me. So I think the fact that John is older has helped with that. He understands more about how life events can, can change you and, and mould you. So, yeah, definitely age does make cute, the big difference there, I think, yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Support in dark times has also been an important part of Ebony and Flit's relationship. During their initial secret affair, Ebony was still going out with Flit's girlfriend's son. But their secret age gap relationship came to an end when Flit decided to marry his girlfriend, Judy. Ebony suddenly found herself on the outside. When Flick got married, I really felt quite used and hurt. And I just thought, he really didn't love me after all, so I just started to do whatever I wanted to do and not care about if it got me into trouble. By then, Ebony had two children with Judy's son, but her life began to spiral out of control. I um, started using drugs, drinking heavy blacking things out, couldn't handle it. 
As one problem led to another, she was eventually imprisoned in 2010 for a violent act and she lost custody of her children. I've got two years, four months, served my time. While Ebony was in prison, Flit separated from Judy. Newly single, he began to visit Ebony and rekindled his relationship with her. Flit started to come and visit me in prison. There wasn't no trust there. I still fancied him, but the love had gone. People used to think I was visiting my daughter. And I used to say, no, it's just a good friend of mine. The more times he visited me, and that is when he becomes sort of the light at the end of the tunnel. And I could realise I could sort of lean on him, and he does love me, and I love him. Go on. <laughs> Four weeks after her release from prison in 2012, Ebony and Flit dashed to Gretna Green to tie the knot. It was everything I hoped for more, and just to realise this man that I've loved for so long, he's actually become my partner, my husband, and just kept crying. And it was just <laughs> such a state, but yeah, it was amazing. Everything I hoped for. Keeping a relationship exciting during long periods away from each other is a challenge Michelle and 26-year-old Mesba have also found difficult. You can't touch, you can't kiss, you can't hug, and it is a lonely life, really. But having been burned by her relationships with British men, she's prepared to endure separation from her new love. Today, they're spending some precious moments together, shopping in Mesba's hometown of Kef. I am so happy for get Michelle here with me. And that's my marriage. Because I have a long time I not meet Michelle, five months. You like that? Yes. It is a big problem because she's in England and I am in Tunisia, and she is far. And. Uh, no solution about that. But long flights to Tunisia and those long periods apart are only a small part of what Michelle has done to cement her relationship with Mesba. Yeah, about a six month ago when I was in Tunisia, um, I did convert to Muslim. Mesper did talk to me about it. He told me about Islam. But he did not push me. He said, it's your decision. Mesper went out and bought me all the clothes and he took me to the mosque. And afterwards, it was on the radio in Tunisia that I'd become Muslim. Yeah. I do pray at home, but really not sure about everything that I'm supposed to do yet. There's a lot of standing up, kneeling. So much different than when I was a Christian. Stop eating pork, um, no alcohol. Well, when I say I don't drink, I have the... Occasionally, I have one, one beer. But that's for medicinal purposes. Michelle, you ready? Yes. Coming up, Michelle is keen to impress Mesba's parents. So nice, baby. Really? Once she meets me and she gets to know me, I think she'll like me. What was that? And love conquers all in the tangled web of an age gap family. You find it a bit awkward at times, which I can understand that was his ex-wife. <laughs> 51-year-old Muslim convert Michelle is preparing to meet her 26-year-old boyfriend's parents for the first time. <laughs> Very, very nervous. My stomach is turning. First time I'll meet his mum. Um, I think my spare's mum is um, 
about the same age as me, which, and I'm 51. I am a little worried about that because I'm frightened that she might think, well, I've got a young son here, 26, and um, he has women the same age as his mother. But I think once she meets me and she gets to know me, I think, I think everything will be OK and I think she'll like me. Michelle, you ready? Yes. Whoa, Michelle. So nice, baby. Really? Wallah. I like it. Thank you. While Mesba may like the dress, it's his mum that Michelle needs to impress today. Uh, I am sure uh, all my family like Michelle. I am a little nervous. Get the other side. Yeah, I was told by dad about that, but my mom no. After a few months like that, I tell you, oh my mom, I have Michelle. She's my love like that, and she accepted that. Uh, slowly. Mesba's mum has laid on a traditional Tunisian feast. And she, she tell you if you want to uh, eat fish. Has Michelle won Mesba's mum's seal of approval despite not liking her food? After meeting her, um, she's such a lovely lady. Um, and I think she likes me because she kept looking at me and smiling. Yeah, it was nice. And my mom, she would go. Really? <laughs> As Michelle gets to know Mesba's family, over in Georgia, Adam and Sylvia are also uniting their two families. On the guy's outfits, all white, pastel. I'm not about pastels at all. With their wedding day planned for tomorrow, thoughts turn to those who can't be there. I just um, kind of wish that uh, you'd have been able to meet Jacob. I know we would have got along well. He's such a card, too, such a uh, funny guy. Jacob was Sylvia's eldest child. It was got his friends, and he was, um, they were playing guitar, and another young gentleman wanted a ride home. So uh, he agreed to do it. They pulled into a gas station. Um, another car pulled up. The guy jumped out, asked for a cigarette. When Jacob turned to his buddy to get one, uh, the child shot into the vehicle and took him out, took his life at that point. Jacob was a good kid. He, he really was, you know. He would have, he would have loved Adam. Sylvia's son Jacob was just 18 when he was murdered. The criminal who did it was high on methamphetamines mm -hmm. and did not even, has never met Jacob before. After Jacob's death, Sylvia separated from his father, her partner of 21 years. But it was her relationship with Adam which helped Sylvia finally come to terms with her loss. You know, when you're going through a tough time in your life, your family can just be so strong for you. Um, and then you meet that person that, that is your strength, you know, that, that changes things. They add that, that element that you are missing. You know, I really felt joy. I think if I hadn't have met Adam there, God would have thrown him in my life somewhere else. I really do. I think we were meant to be together. Stars were aligned, apparently. Yeah, the stars were definitely aligned. 
What was that? Here, yeah, let me take it. this for you. Here, baby. Here. There's nothing much to do. Yeah. Oh, After years of family struggle, Peter and Ebony are on the move. It was that. <laughs> With help from Ebony's 15-year-old son, Dominic. I say that's my false teeth. He gets embarrassed because he's got some false teeth. Yeah, yeah, I definitely tell him he can. Every day, lady. Yeah. You're a fogey or something like that, you know? You're a pensioner, I'll pay your taxes, you know, taking the mick out of him. I know what you need, <laughs> Mum. Your medication. Judy, Flit's ex-wife, and Ebony's former mother-in-law is Dominic's grandmother. She's a regular visitor. Judy, as I call her mum, um, she was married to Flip. Um, they've been divorced since 2009, and she is the grandparent to my two boys. Well, then Judy got upstairs. Yeah, it was a bit complicated because obviously the fella I was with, that was his mum, was Judy. So that was kind of like my new mother-in-law. So. It's a bit of a strange setup, but I love having her around. You find it a bit awkward at times, which I can understand because that was his ex-wife. Even though her ex-husband Flit is now married to Ebony, Judy's still happy to be a part of the family. It was a bit awkward, but it isn't now. Once I got my head around it, I'm fine. Yeah. Flit and Ebony are a lovely couple. Mm. I love you so much. They're made for one another. I oh, know, I see it, love. Don't get too close. Yeah. When you say it feels sometimes strange, because I like to do with Ebony, like, you know, squeeze a bum or something like that, you know, when... But I, can't, I have to hold myself back because Judy's maybe sitting there, you know. But there's one place they can be totally alone, their new bedroom. How can I work like this? <laughs> Oh, sorry about your toys. That's all right. <laughs> we will, won't we? Yeah, we'll, we'll be, be happy. Yeah. We can cross I do love it. I know. Uh, How about we cross in this bed tonight? Yeah. Get the bed built. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For our age gap lovers, fun in the bedroom is like a fine wine, only getting better with age. The sex between me and Miss Bear is absolutely fantastic. Yes. Yes? Yes, she's fantastic. Flit's amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, it's not all about him. It's not a five-second wonder. It goes on for hours. In regards to sex, I think, uh, I think we're good to go. Yep. I can't ask her about as you want to You think hey, so? Sometimes, um, Sometimes we can three times a day. Me and John click in the bedroom. I think that's how I'm going to answer that one. We work in the bedroom, so it doesn't matter that he's 70. It's actually rejuvenated me to be uh, with a younger wife. Not being crude, but if he does go limp down there, it's not all about that. And he can satisfy me in many more ways. Sure, sure. In Montreal, age gap rockers Jerry and Shell are not just husband and wife, but bandmates too. Today, they're showcasing their new album in a local record store. It's not quite Madison Square Gardens, but everyone's got to start somewhere. While other rock stars have been brought to their knees by drugs and alcohol, it's an allergy to cats that's threatening to scupper Shell's performance. With their adoring public flooding through the doors, Shell needs to get her act together before she's on stage. I'm feeling very uh, congested and <laughs> with the allergies to the, the cat that's running around here. Um, so I don't know how that's going to be I'm trying to sing. But it would take more than a cat to stop their hero's deep purple. So for Shell, the show must go on. Hey, everybody, how about a bit of blues?
the collaboration between this age gap couple has been emotionally and musically satisfying. It was a whole new experience for me doing the recording. Yeah. And I think it brings us a little more closer together as a couple. Having a second chance to do my life all over again is uh, not that I'm a believer, but I would say it was a godsend because uh, the last few years before I met Shell were, were disastrous. I went through, through a lot of bad things. Definitely had uh, depression problems, I had a bad relationship, so when she came in, uh, everything got better. Definitely the best thing that happened to me was, was meeting Shell and just uh, redoing my life all over again. Like, like being young all over again, really. Excellent crowd. Uh, you can't ask for more, whether it's two people or 10,000. You know, music is what counts, and I was having a good time. That was a good shot, Mummy. <laughs> they say you're only as old as the person you feel. 70-year-old John is determined to keep up with his 30-year-old wife and her children. <laughs> he acts younger than I do. This is too serious. <laughs> I probably uh, have reverse roles, I'll, to be honest. I'll, see, I'll rather get her to go down the gym more and exercise more. John's regular training partner at the gym is Matthew, his 21-year-old son from a previous relationship. He likes to keep fit. He always stay active. When he trains, yeah, he tra trains hard, just like me or anyone else my age. About six months ago, I went back to powerlifting again. And I'm lifting the same as I was when I was about 25. My dad's always wanted to be with a younger lady. I don't think that age gap matters, really, because Jo, she's mentally quite older anyway. My dad's still quite young at heart. Young, I still think he's younger than me sometimes. Coming up, Sylvia's walking down the aisle, and Flitz left his mark on Ebony. Swans mate for life, like me and Flit, then I thought they're two necks together with the love heart. I thought that would really be nice, so that's the one I got. It's the morning of Sylvia and Adam's wedding in Georgia, America. That's your something borrowed. That's it. Where's your something blue? They've opted to marry at home because their age gap relationship triggers uncomfortable stares in their local church. <laughs> I notice it probably more than Adam does. You know, they, that thing. When they're looking straight at you, and I'm going, what? Today, their home is to be filled with close friends and family, so there's no danger of any suspicious looks. The rings, do you have, are you okay? Got them. Jacob, the son she's lost, is in her thoughts, while Sylvia's other two sons, Isaac and Daniel, walk her down the aisle. After 10 years together, 52-year-old blushing bride Sylvia is about to start her married life with the man who has made her happy again. There has never been anybody more genuine that I've ever known than Adam. He's one of the kindest, gentlest people that I know, but he's also one of the strongest. I, Adam, take you, Sylvia. I, Adam, take you, Sylvia. To be my wife. To be my wife. And you live and die for somebody. He's a good man. For richer and for poor. For richer and for poor. I promise my love. I promise my love. Till death we do part. Till death we do part. She's genuine. She's got a kind heart. Uh, she's extremely loving and understanding of people's flaws. Um, especially mine. I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may Thank kiss you. your bride. Thank you, sir. Well, time, right? 
So if someone were to say Adam is too young for me, it makes me a little angry. You have no idea, you know, how much we've shared together, what we've laughed about and cried about and worked through. You know, we've uh, forged this relationship for 10 years. Um, it's very important to us to stay together. You ain't got work tomorrow, have you? No. That's all right then, that's good. No. Another day with you. After getting through the hard times together, oh, yeah. Flit and Ebony are also committed to each other for life. Because I do love Flit ever so much. I was actually thinking of what tattoo to do, and Swan's mate for life, and that's what, like me and Flit, then I thought they're two next together with the love heart. I thought that'd really be nice, so that's the one I got. While Ebony plays domestic goddess, Flit is on his way to pick up stepson Dominic from school. He knows it's been a long journey for Ebony from prison and losing custody of her children to the stable home life they now share together. She first came out, she was just kind of a little bit crazy. But then as three months went by, she calmed right down. Because if I didn't do these things for her, she would just been up and gone. And she could have been back into mischief. Flit takes his role as the family patriarch seriously, despite being old enough to be Dom's granddad. I do consider myself a father figure to Dominic, and I said, look, I'll, if you want me to be your, if you want me to act as your dad, and I'll do it as your dad. And he calls me dad, and he loves it, and because I love it too. This afternoon, like most, Flit's doing the school run. Again, did you hear that? Cool. Oh, hello, Daddy. How are you doing? Hello, Sunny Boy. How are you doing? Um, I'm doing all right. It's hard, marvellous. Flit has been really good. That's helped me quite a lot. I don't mind Flit's age. It's good. I'd rather Mum would be with an older man than a younger man that doesn't treat her right. What have you done right. now? I went into mechanics yeah. today. Oh, and oh, great. Nice one. I've passed it. Oh, brilliant. I passed the test. Oh, what I don't Flit takes Tommy to school. He shows him how to do mechanics, to change the mm. wheels on the car. You know, the man needs stuff in life. Mum, we're home. Has anybody got any dinner for us? To Mom. rebuild that time with the kids and to have him here is lovely, because obviously, when I was in prison, they didn't come up to see me very much because they couldn't handle coming to visit me. I got the shoes on. Hi, Hello, darling. Yeah. Have you been back to school, darling? Um, yeah, that's right. Dominic needs him, he does, and you're just amazing with him. I'll do my best, I really do. No. Ebony and Flit's rebuilt family life is a testament to how age gap love can bring generations together and put the past to bed. Prost. I made him. Prost. 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 This is definitely the time for me to live a little. All my life I've done everything for my children, um, brought them up, never left them with anybody. And now I think it's my time. My time too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say being married to Shell and having a, a beautiful little child when I was 54, it was like a whole second life. It was uh, being young again. People shouldn't jump to conclusions about the love people have between each other. I think they should look at it a little closer before they judge. Give it a go. Don't let the age hold you back. Um, if you feel happy with that person and that person gives you everything that you feel you are looking for, then don't let age be the problem. No, it's lovely. I've always been sort of oldie woldy. I've always liked my old music, my old cars, and obviously with Flip, it just fits in perfect. It's a bit of vintage yourself, isn't it, my love? So it's fine for me. Huh? If anyone is thinking about getting an age gap relationship, I'd say go for it. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, the troubled world of age gap love. His father and mother were invited to the wedding, but they chose not to attend. Becoming a great-grandmother 
at 29. It felt a bit weird, the idea of me having grandchildren. And the reality of life. Mother. With a much younger man. <laughs> I'm the Muppet. <laughs>